Let's now focus on message transfer agents, in particular postfix. We're going to install it on the system as RPM query all will show us momentarily when we quit the interface that it is not installed. We'll grab by postfix. However, send mail is installed by default. And we'll set up a section labeling it postfix MTA. And it features a message transfer agent or an application which is responsible for delivering messages to your users, usually to the local user's mailbox, but optionally to a remote user's mailbox. So it's a message transfer agent, and it's highly configurable, highly customizable. It's also modular. So for example, you can include support for spam via Spam Assassin, and have Spam Assassin work with Postfix along with other tools that perform content check and others. Now let's look for SendMail. SendMail is the default MTA included with Red Hat Enterprise Linux and it has been for years even prior to the Enterprise series. So this is what's installed but we prefer Postfix. It's easier to configure. It's modular. It's not monolithic as is SendMail. So that said we need to install Postfix. Now there's a utility that Red Hat provides for switching between the MTAs, SendMail and Postfix. And there's a package that you may install to help you effect that change. Let's control F and search for system switch mail. This package provides a utility which allows you to switch the MTA and there's a GUI version of it as well. So we'll need these either or to perform the switch from one to the other, from SendMail to Postfix and vice versa. So note, use system switch mail package. Either the Google or text version to switch between postfix and send mail. So with that said, again, let's set up our tasks area. The first task will be to install, as usual, postfix. And that's affected by using yum, since we have a repository, install postfix. Let's try to do so from the shell on our local system. Clear screen and control shift V. This will attempt to install postfix from the remote server. There you see it's installing it. And momentarily we'll have it installed. Let's RPM query all. Grep system switch to search the RPM repository to determine whether or not, although we can clearly see from the output that it has not RPM that is installed the switcher utility. The postfix is indeed installed and again before we set it up for production use we'll ensure to install the switcher utility. It's not that you absolutely need the switching utility but the switching utility makes the process less painful. Let's RPM query this postfix and examine the contents. Here's a package that includes, as is usually the case with most RPM packages, lots of documentation. There's a PAM entry for authentication with SMTP. A main ETC postfix directory. This is the primary top level container for configuration files. So let's just note that primary configuration directory container. And let's continue looking through. Beneath ETC postfix are key files, including main.cf. This is the primary configuration file. This is where you will make the bulk of your changes, but there are other configuration files, such as master.cf, which handles pointers to deliverers, like local deliverers, and other items, such as a transport table, which allows you to write rules which govern the transport of specific domains, messages to specific domains. For example, if you mail a business partner or a specific domain and would like to send those messages using a specific SMTP server, the transport file is the table or text-based database file which gets converted to a DB file using Postmap that you'd want to place your changes in. And Postfix will read this file to make the determination as to whether or not 
the message that's being currently sent matches any of the rules in postfix, etc postfix transport. The virtual file maintains a list of virtual users. Let's just copy these two items because they are important even for basic usage. So contains routing rules for domains. For example, again, if you want to send, let's say, messages destined to AOL.com via specific mail server, then you'll update the, update the transport file. And virtual contains virtual user mappings, which we'll be looking at as well. So for example, we can set up for the domains that we route various aliases that point to a specific mailbox so that we can appear to the world to have multiple accounts or have multiple people behind those accounts. There's an access file which con controls access to the MTA and you can restrict access based on IP address if you'd like. And other items. Now beneath user live exec postfix you'll find the binaries that are responsible for controlling or running the postfix environment. Again, as we mentioned, in contrast to SendMail, postfix is a modular, non-monolithic application. And as a consequence, that means there are many binaries responsible for handling the whole MTA process from receiving connections using TCP to delivering locally versus remotely to queuing the items, piping them, so on and so forth. Here's a TLS manager. It handles transport layer security related mails. Then there are administrative binaries that allow us to administer the MTA. One popular binary when working with mapped files is PostMap which allows you to convert a text file such as virtual or transport to a DB file which is read dynamically by the running postfix daemon. Another one's PostQ allows you to interrogate the queue. PostSuper allows you to manage the queue such as removing or doing other things to jobs that are currently in the queue and others. PostConf, another useful utility, dumps the current configuration of the running postfix daemon. So again, it's modular and it supports many of the features found by other MTAs, including TLS support. Now we do need that system config or system switch utility, so we want to install system switch dash mail, and we'll just note that in our documentation that we will do this. So two, install system switch mail. package. Again, of course, like all things, this is not an absolute requirement. It simply makes the process a little bit easier. Let's try this from the shell. And again, there's also a GUI version of the switch utility which would launch within our GNOME interface. This will search a repository for system switch mail. And now when we type system switch mail it's available and will allow us to switch mail. So our next task is to actually switch from send mail to postfix. So third task switch default MTA from send mail which is the default to postfix. Again this utility will take care of the general startup files. The unit D entry and the sysconfig entry as well as other entries that are related to startup. We should also note that Postfix is a drop-in replacement for SendMail. It indeed provides a SendMail binary. We should just note that as one of the features. It's a drop-in replacement for SendMail as it provides a SendMail binary which accepts the options supported by the native SendMail binary. So with that said, let's switch the configuration by executing system switch mail, which launches this curses text or n curses text base interface. We need to choose the primary MTA at this stage, navigate to OK, and that's it. As is the case with most simple Red Hat utilities, not much is echoed, and the interfaces leave a lot to be desired, but nonetheless, providing there are no exit statuses other than zero, you should be able to surmise that the process has executed successfully, which is why we have echoed the exit status. So now, 
postfix is the default. And if you rerun system switch mail, you see that the bar is highlighted over postfix to indicate that it is the default. It would be nice to see a little asterisk or plus sign or something more intuitive, but nonetheless, it is what it is. And now postfix is the default MTA that will start in our system. Now, as far as whether or not it's actually running, you can PSEF grep the master utility. The master program is the master binary, master diamond, da daemon that is, supported in postfix, which spawns the other daemons when necessary. A daemon for routing the messages inbound, outbound, binding to TCP, so on and so forth. So user lab exec postfix master is running. Another test would be to execute nets.mtlp grep25 where you should see that the master process has control of port 25, albeit on the loopback adapter, which brings up another point. So we've switched by executing system switch mail, and then we've selected obviously postfix, and note the default postfix configuration binds to the loopback adapter address. So we will need to change this if we intend to route messages in from other hosts on the wire. Which leads us to our fourth task and that is to configure postfix to receive messages from remote systems. Now, in its current configuration, Postfix will deliver messages. If you use a utility such as MUT and send a message to yourself, it'll work. Let's just insert that as the fourth task before we move on to accepting messages from the wire. So the fourth task is to test local mail delivery because obviously we cannot test remote mail delivery because Postfix is currently not listening to all IP addresses or a routable IP address. So we'll use the MUT utility, which is a text-based utility, to test local delivery. And when using MUT, you can specify a local address or a remote standard SMTP email address. So we'll log in on Linux CT04 as user root. Which MUT tells us it's in user bin? We launch MUT, and here we see messages from LogWatch as well as one that appears to be for the certificate for site1.linuxvt.internal. And this was sent as a result of executing gen key and it tells us that it will expire in 29 days, which is fine. Besides all of that, let's delete everything in MUT. To delete everything, execute upper D and